Sub-Saharan Africa has seen strong economic growth over the past two decades. But is everyone gaining? Inequality hampers economic prosperity, make it harder to reduce poverty, and can lead to political and social unrest. It is a pressing problem for the region and beyond. I'm Rasmane with Raogo. And I am Habtam Fuji. We are economists at the IMF, and in collaboration with our colleagues, we undertook a comprehensive study on regional inequality in Sub-Saharan Africa. But how do we perform such analysis where there is a lack of data? The standard approach for measuring prosperity of a country or its subregion is using GDP per capita. This indicator is used for conducting analysis in advanced economies where data is readily available. That becomes increasingly more difficult for low-income countries where GDP at subnational region level is not readily available. To overcome this issue, we used nighttime satellite imagery of the Earth to measure the intensity of light in the region. The more light is reflected from the region, the greater the economic activity. And by comparing changes in night lights across time, we can see how inequality evolves locally and regionally. To complement the satellite data, we also used household survey data and macroeconomic indicators. We discovered that since the 90s, regional inequality in sub-Saharan Africa has been steadily declining, but progress in the last decade has slowed down. This chart shows you what we are talking about. The blue line represents regional inequality in sub-Saharan African countries, while the red line represents the same in all other emerging and developing economies. As you can see, Inequality in Sub-Saharan Africa was on a rapid downward trend until 2010, when the rate of decline slowed down over 2019. From the household survey data we analyzed, this plot shows the relative magnitude of regional inequality in Sub-Saharan African countries and how it is related to inequalities among residents. We observed three facts. First, countries with higher regional inequality had larger inequalities among residents in their subnational regions. Second, relatively richer countries, indicated by larger bubbles, tend to have larger regional and intra-regional inequalities. Finally, inequality among households within a given region is generally high compared to inequality between regions of a country. We also compare the lagging regions and the leading regions in terms of social development. The results show that lagging regions tend to do worse on key measures of social development than leading regions. This occurs across all social indicators, including access to infrastructure, education, and labor market outcomes. The leading lagging region divide is most visible with regard to access to basic infrastructure. For example, access to electricity and internet connection is nearly four times higher in leading regions. We also found that there is an even allocation of public resources as public investment per capita is nearly seven times higher in leading regions than in lagging regions. To identify policies and strategies that could help address regional inequality, we have to understand the main drivers for the trend. Our analysis shows that lower levels of regional inequality tend to correlate to several key features. The first is macroeconomic stability. For example, low inflation is associated with lower regional inequality. Another factor is trade policy. Access to international markets could help create market opportunities for lagging regions. Next, we explore whether a targeted private investment could play a role. Our result shows targeted investment correlates strongly with an improvement of regional inequality. Finally, we also noticed that the quality of institutions matters. The countries with robust regulatory systems generally have lower regional inequality. On the other hand, countries experiencing civil conflicts have higher levels of regional inequality. Based on our research, we believe we can outline some effective policies to address regional inequality in sub-Saharan Africa. First, we believe government have a vital role to play in ensuring redistributive fiscal policy in their countries. They can prioritize programs that help improve social indicators and access to infrastructure for the underserved regions. Second, ensuring macroeconomic stability Supporting good governance and building resiliency in fragile countries will help reduce regional inequalities. Third, we see that the private sector can play an impactful role. Government can provide fiscal incentives to attract private investment to lagging regions. 
Finally, we encourage sub-Saharan African government to improve statistical capacity and collect data at the sub-national level. The more data we have, the better policy we can devise. Addressing regional inequalities is important to boost economic growth, reduce poverty, preserve social cohesion, and build resilience. And with better policies, the governments of Sub-Saharan Africa can build a more equitable, brighter future for their citizens. <music>